Welcome to Seattle and the road to the Final Four capacity filled key arena. It's the second round of the NCAA. Ohio State taking on the number 12. Six seed Florida. Weber State taking on the Gators today. Prevailed earlier tonight here in Indianapolis over Oklahoma State. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Indianapolis. Scene. Welcome to Seattle, everyone, with John Sunbull. This is Kevin Harlan. Great theatrics already here today. Gonzaga upsetting top seed or the top seed in the West, Stanford. Now, let's talk about this Weber State team. Took everybody by surprise, John, led by a kid named Harold Arsenal, who is an unknown until a couple days ago. A couple, a couple nights ago, the kid from New Orleans, the show, as they like to call him. In Ogden, Utah, Harold Arsenal, what a ball game, single-handedly knocked out the Tar Heels, 36 points. You know, he did it in a variety of ways, Kevin, smaller players, he took. The strength of the Ohio State team is clearly its guards with Scooney, Penn, and Michael Red, and that is also the strength of the Detroit Titans. We saw it in the upset win over UCLA here on Thursday night as the Titans were led by the great backcourt of Jermaine Jackson and Rashad Phillips. They got a lot of charm and personality. They're confident. They both can play the point, distribute the basketball. Rashad Phillips, one of those performers that can get a shot despite being 5'9", against bigger, taller, tougher opponents anytime he wants. But how about the strength? Jermaine Jackson, the ability to take a hit and a little nylon. Perry Watson in his sixth season as coach at Detroit. 113 wins. Only two coaches have won more games at Detroit. Bob Callahan and Lloyd Brazil. The starting lineup for the Titans. Bakari Alexander and Walter Kraft in the front court as they start with a three-guard set. Rashad Phillips, Desmond Ferguson, and Jermaine Jackson. Jackson had 17 points played 39 minutes in their round one win over UCLA Jim O'Brien in his second season at Ohio State has taken very little time to turn the program around 32 and 30 his record now his starting lineup Jason Singleton and Ken Johnson he'll also start with a three guard set John Sanderson out of the starting lineup tonight Brian Brown Michael Red and Scooney Penn Penn the co-player of the year in the Big Ten, along with Mateen Cleaves of Michigan State, averaging 16.7 points per game and more than four assists. But a big story in this game will be Penn's health. He's been banged up lately and hasn't played as well. John Cal, the lead official. He's working with Tom Lopes and Tom Harrington. Detroit and Red. And Walter Kraft controlled the tip, and Jermaine Jackson saved it. And Sean McDonough. After I get out from under the table, I thought he was going to hit me. Ohio State goes, man, man. Little trap on the side. Bakari Alexander, not much of a score, but a great role player. Jermaine Jackson missed a three. The battle for the rebound, controlled in the corner by Scooney Penn. Terrific guards on both sides, containing particularly Scooney, very important for Detroit. And the writer's choice as the player of the year in the Big Ten, and the coaches selected Mateen Cleaves. Michael Red missed a jumper. It was saved by Johnson, but saved to Jermaine Jackson of Detroit. Desmond Ferguson missed a three. And that's his game, too. A little check out and a foul. This is the third meeting all time between these two schools. They haven't played since 1962. Ohio State won both meetings in 62 and another one in 1960. Detroit comes in having won 18 of its last 20. The history against Big Ten schools not good. 29 wins and 111 losses all time against the Big Ten, including 0-2 this year with losses to Michigan and Iowa. 2-3 zone look and Ferguson gets another look. He can light it up. They better be concerned about those open opportunities. No score more than a minute in. Penn, a junior from Salem, Massachusetts, transferred in from Boston College and sat out last year. Incredible what one guy can do to a program, though. 
particularly at the point position. Bothered by a sore lower back, he threw the ball up toward the rim, and Johnson was there to score the first bucket of the game. I think it was a pass, though, don't you? Great field, dragged guys, and then delivered. Basket was scored by Singleton. There's Phillips trying a three, and it rattles out to Johnson. So Detroit is scoreless. They survived two long stretches without a field goal last night against UCLA. Penn steps into a three. Well, if he ever starts feeling healthy, Jim O'Brien felt for about five weeks playing as well as any guard in the country, then that injury up at Penn State. The last regular season game of the year fell on his tailbone. His scoring's been down. His quickness has been noticeably reduced. And an offensive foul called against Bakari Alexander. As he ran over red, and as you can hear, there are a lot of Ohio State fans here. Not a long drive from Columbus. So you're at the Value Arena, don't you? Value City Arena? Mm -hmm. The beautiful new home of the Ohio State Buckeyes, which opened earlier this season. And Detroit's like a team. You say, well, look down there. The uniforms aren't as sharp looking as ours, but they get after you, and they play hard defense. They went seven minutes without a field goal in the first half last night and five minutes to start the second half without a field goal and still beat UCLA. So this little drought isn't likely to rattle them. But right now it's seven to nothing as Michael Red scored inside. And he just kept the dribble alive. Extraordinary. Jackson who was the Midwestern Collegiate Conference Player of the Year. Now Phillips was first team all conference. And they settle with Jackson. A reach in, it's poked away by Brian Brown. Dangerous though, you wait for that TV timeout with a team as good as this, you can have your problems. A little bit of hand action, the strip, and how about the ability to gather? A little kiss at the end. Michael Red's got quick, delicate hands. Rashad Phillips. Not a good shot. That was a very long three. Penn down the lane. Dished off. He thought that Singleton was going to remain in the corner, but Jason started toward the bucket. That nice avoiding of the charge, too. Good body control as Scooney got down the lane. The first turnover committed by Ohio State. They lead seven to nothing. Long way to go to get to the start of that Connecticut New Mexico game mm -hmm. earlier today when UConn got out to a 17 and nothing lead before the Lobos scored. And Brian Brown outside doing a nice job so so far on Jermaine Jackson talented with the dribble. He was called for the foul there his first and the team second. How about his first start against Murray State I mean, a little bit of surprise that he gets two in a row playing a lot smaller. John Sanderson started most of the year, but Brian Brown was inserted in a lineup two nights ago. They're still scoreless, the Titans, as Alexander missed, and Kraft couldn't control the rebound. Penn, the pull-up, along with a three-point try. Jackson, the rebound, and even though he's a guard, Jermaine is their leading rebounder at six and a half per game. He was fourth in their conference, but he has four rebounds already tonight. Good screen. Here comes the double, Sean. Phillips couldn't get around Brown. Kraft picked off a pass that might have been intended for Ferguson. Alexander swatted by Johnson and out of bounds. And a little whoop as well. Boy, interior defense like that, Sean, it's going to be awfully hard. They're going to have to settle for jump shots, Detroit. Ohio State pitching the shutout in our first timeout. Florida had to battle back from a double-digit deficit to eliminate Penn on Thursday night. And the credit there goes to Billy Donovan for the adjustments he made at halftime. A little Billy ball. Right, lobbing it inside. Great catch by Major Parker. Plucked off the rim by Jensen. And Weaver State is at their best when they get out and run. Gill ramming his way into Shannon and a foul called on Eddie Shannon. They want to take a bit. They want to use their ability to get out, push the basketball. They're good in the open floor, good shooters. Arsenal leaping and scoring again. Three of three. How about the body strength? 215 pounds, 6'6. 
leans into the taller guys, tries to just get his body, hesitates, controls the ball. Stolt the other way. He hasn't missed until then. Rebound grabbed by Jensen and on his backside gets it out to Jackson. And Jensen, one of the most underrated players in the Big Sky Conference, solid underneath. He will have to do the job against Florida. Lawson to Arsenal. Will they double him? Now they do, contorting his body, but can't get it to drop. Rebound by Parker. Knocked away by Gill. Wright retrieves it. Here's Shannon. Thinking about three, launching a three, and buries a three. Key to Florida, they don't think about what they have to do when they catch a basketball. What a great crossover by Gill. Arsenal cleans it up. Inside, collected by Brent Wright. And Gill has to make the easy one. You're going to get enough tough attempts. Shannon tried to drill another one. Parker inside, banged around and fouled inside by Weber State. Well, the pace is as we thought it would be, Kevin. Back and forth. Weber State, though, must rebound. They were out-rebounded by a taller Carolina team, 39 to 27. They have to stay within vicinity of rebounds of this Florida team, or they'll get eaten a lot. Arsenault picks up the foul. At the free throw line is Parker. And Parker hits his first as we send it over to Mike Harris. All right, Kevin. Well, Coach Ron of Begelin's uh, pregame talk was pretty simple. He just told his guys, do what Gonzaga did. How's that for strategy? <laughs> it was a great uh, good mixture, strategy, I guess. Great concoction by Gonzaga earlier on. Well, he might have been talking, too, about the effort. We're not as big. We may not be as mobile. And what Gonzaga did in the first game, the upset of Stanford, it was just their energy level. Weber State is here because they survived a second half comeback for North Carolina on Thursday. But they trail the Gators now by seven early in the game. Florida is vaulted on top of the Wildcats of Weber State. 13 to 6. Weber State with an enrollment of 14,600 from the Big Sky Conference in Ogden, Utah. They receive the automatic bid by winning the Big Sky Tournament. Coming in as the 14th seed. Well, Jackson. And Jackson handles it in their early offense against the pressure because if they can advance it to a guy like Eddie Gill, Gill can take people off the dribble but can also shoot the jump shot. Gill, the true point guard of this team. Damian Baskerville is in for the first time. Baskerville, the last two years, was all Big Sky Conference, but not this year. With the influx of new players, Arsenal and Gill to his squad has had to play more of a role on this ball club. Arsenal working on Miller. Triple team. Shannon makes the steal. A fly the other way. Here comes Dupay. Screen by Stolt. Dupay drives, hounded by Baskerville. Miller deploys a three. Rebounded by Jackson. You're always surprised when he shoots the ball and misses because the release is so good. Three freshmen and two seniors for the Gators. Dupay will have to stay down and stay on Gill. Gill, very explosive. Three. Foul called on Shannon of Florida. It's going to get crowded inside for Harold Arsenal. Well, Billy Donovan and his staff, great job. Harold Arsenal going to his left, and one, two, three, now four. White jerseys surrounding him. He will have to do a better job when he recognizes it earlier. Make the kick out. Oh, look at this. Right eye, cheek to cheek. Well, Harold Arsenal simply has walked into this tournament. First year at Weber State, played his high school basketball in the shadows of the Superdome in New Orleans, where he was the MVP three consecutive seasons. MVP is a title that he likes. Each school that he's been since after high school, Kevin, he's done the same. Weber State began the game three of three. Now they're all four. DePay swerving. And there comes Miller. And it knocked away Arsenal. The other end for Gill, flying inside for two. Active hands by Gill. Florida cannot 
get caught napping when they're on offense. Well, it stops an 0 for 4 run. The Gators by five. Weaver stayed extremely quick defensively with their feet and with their hands. Very athletic. Dupay. He'll watch a three. Rebound pulled down by Baskerville. Now they run. Jackson at the other end of the pass. Arsenal the screen. Rebounded inside. Grabbed onto by Brent Wright. And here comes Miller the other way to Dupay. Ohio State with an early lead on Detroit. Playing that in Indianapolis. Detroit upset UCLA in Connecticut. St. John's big winners today. Off balance inside the rook. The freshman Haslam can't get it. But Jensen does pick up the foul. And the good low post by this freshman. Haslam surprised the other night. 0.0 rebound. Had a physical presence, though. Good low post player. Has been solid all season long. You know, John, of the four heralded freshmen that came in for Billy Donovan to the Gators, at least the feeling is from the Gator coaching staff, this kid has made the most impact, the most consistent, and the most solid play. A young man who lost about 30 pounds coming out of high school from summertime into through the preseason workouts by the Florida Gators and then going on the early part of the season had to get his weight down to be more mobile inside had some big ball games had a pretty solid tournament for the in the SEC at 16 in the loss against Arkansas 63 percent free throw shooter buries the second one but a guy that gives them an inside presence when you have four perimeter players, you got us down low. Gill outside to catch him. The 6'9 senior from Lawrenceburg, Indiana, knocks it in from outside. And a turnover for the Gators. In a three point game, Weber State can tie. Arsenal double up and down. Pouring his way into stifling defense. The strength of his upper body and the quickness off the floor is why he is tough to go. Only 6'6", but he moves well without the basketball. He establishes himself down low. Now look how quickly he leaves the floor against the taller team. Good pass away from the defense, the hard bounce. The ball's already released before Haslam and Wright can get to it. Arsenal was arsenic for North Carolina on Thursday when he pummeled it for 34. And I mean, he had an array of shots outside and inside. And doesn't really show much emotion on the court. And against Carolina, I guarantee inside that every time, either it with Lang or Ophelizer, two big, tall, lanky bodies to try to stay with him. In the midst of our first time, 8-1 run by Weber State. Haslam throwing his body around inside. For pure strength down low. Tough matchup for Ketchum. Baskerville has given energy. Hemmed in, gets it out to Jackson. Jackson is a blur. Crashing with ramming speed into Haslam, and they call him for the charge. Kevin, the ball has to be advanced by the pass. The more you dribble, you allow the Gators to get back. If he throws it to his right, he's got in to get wide open. Now the big man, a little bit of a lean. Probably questionable. Those two of the guys in white. Jackson has to kick that ball ahead. Both teams right about 50% shooting. As on the right. And this is the pace both coaches like to play. To pay in the hassle. Out to Weeks. Miller. Knocked away by the defensive minded Arsenal. It's Baskerville the other way. Got the screen. To catch him. Another three. Up and off. Rebound by Weeks. He was two of three on Thursday night from three point lane. To Payne. Miller. Wright. Haslam. Miller. The mismatch on Baskerville. Driving, floating, and missing. Rebound by Ketchum. Out to Gill. This is a trap meet in Seattle tonight. Now the patience to slow it down, set it up a little bit. If you Weaver State, Arsenal needs touches. Picked off by Weeks. Gill is there. Weeks shuffling in and taps in his own miss. Simply played volleyball with himself up above everybody. The Gators by four here in Seattle. Ohio State with a 12-0 run to begin it against Detroit. Saved, but right back to Florida. It's right and retaken by Arsenal. 
And he's in the open floor where he is deadly. The crossover and the pass to catch him. Maryland a winner, Auburn a winner, Gonzaga an early game winner. Kevin Weaver State likes to push, but they already look a little windy. The fresh bodies that Billy Donovan will play, keep coming at them. Gill to Jackson, the catch and screen, the feed to Baskerville, and to pay the freshmen's on him. Shot clock at five. Gill with a screen and a whistle inside to pay was caught defending Jackson. Not a good foul. Three seconds left on the shot clock. Billy Donovan with angst on his face. His Gators up by just four. Well, ugly numbers if you're a Detroit fan. 0 for 13. They've been out-rebounded. Good news is not a great number of turnovers. Just three. Scooney Penn with seven rebounds already for Ohio State. Ohio State impressive. Detroit is not. They, I take umbrage to your inference that I was behind most of my life. Uh, you may have been right, but this is a case that Ohio State hasn't helped themselves. I think they should be considerably ahead. Mm -hmm. Detroit, solid, comfortable. Don't rush. Don't force it. Their premier players are on the outside, so they've got to be creative. It's not an inside team. Well, Detroit's got even deeper into the game than New Mexico did without scoring early today. New Mexico's first point came on a free throw against Connecticut with 11.45 left in the first half. We're down to 10.23 left in the first half in this one. A little zone look now, maybe free up Ferguson. He's trying to find holes in the lane. Rashad Phillips. Hey. Finally, with 10.12 left. When you think of it, it's only a 10 point lead. That's right. They played as well made. Ohio State really could have put the hammer to them. Did they say get right, Burley? It's tough to do that against Detroit. An excellent defensive team. They held UCLA, a team that was averaging 78 points to 53. And out of the corner, Savovich. Rebound, Reese. And he was fouled on the put back as he. Bumped into Daniel Y. First foul on Y. Fourth on the Titans. Tonight on CBS, martial arts superstar Sam O'Hung and Arsenio Hall are kicking the fun back into Saturday night. Join the LAPD's dream team in the action series Martial Law. And all of this with red with the two fouls, too. So, I mean, there is some advantage to them or for them. It's just their inefficiency at the offensive end. Bigger, tougher up front for Ohio State. You're not going to get anything in there. Jim O'Brien's going to let Red play with the two fouls. Reese missed his first free throw. Ohio State is not a good free throw shooting team at 61%. Reese made one out of two. That's his first point for the junior from Columbus, who's really bounced around, started his collegiate career at South Florida, then went to John A. Logan Junior College in Illinois. He was at Columbus State for a year in between. He came to Ohio State. Why kept alive the miss, but it was controlled by Penn. Credit Penn with his eighth rebound. He looks spry, you're right. Uh, the lefty released by Phillips, not the kind of shot you want. Well, to Ohio State. Jumper short by Reddy got his own rebound and missed again. And it's Bakari Alexander hollering as he comes out of the pack with the rebound. Ferguson passed up a three. Ordinarily, that's his game. A couple of early misses might have made him tentative. Not this time. Another miss. One for 16 now. Buckeyes, not a heck of a lot better. Jackson deflected the pass out of bounds right to his coach, Perry Watson. Pretty good footwork by Perry uh, trying to sidestep that pass, but that's their little weave where they use the high post. He is sold on defense. Sensational high school coach. Terrific assistant ship up at Michigan. <laughs> they brought that Fab Five in on the Steve Fisher. There's the keys to his team. A run selfish play at both ends. He says we all beat with one heartbeat. That's the motto in the Detroit program. Shot clock down to six. Red has to go. The 
decides to hoist a three. That's the weakest part of his game. Reese, the offensive rebound and miss. So the Buckeyes continue to squander chances to make it much more difficult on the truck. Well, Reese has been terrific on the glass. Jackson, bounce pass to Phillips, the runner, a little too strong. Sabovich got a hand on the rebound, but couldn't control. And the three wouldn't go for Darius Beeland. And even their good shooters are struggling. What a ball fake by Phillips on his penetration earlier. Well, it's still 13 to two. 740 left in the first half. Penn fouled to the drive by Phillips, his second. The team's fifth. Time out. Well, they try to crank up the shooting eye. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg in our studios in New York. Weber State in Florida, three-point game. We'll keep that score at the bottom of your screen and let you know what's happening in Indianapolis at the RCA Dome. The Ohio State Buckeyes with the lead on Detroit, and this could be a bigger lead. Everything has gone wrong for Detroit. They started 0 for 13. There's something that goes right. Stepping into the passing lane, breakaway. And the way they play defense, Greg, the Buckeyes may look back on not extending their lead early in this game to a bigger margin and really regret that they did. With that breakaway bucket, Detroit is now just 3 of 20 from the field, and that's never going to get it done in turn. But they're down 7. I no. mean, that's, that's what they've got to be thinking about. We're a good defensive team. We don't give up a lot of points, and we haven't shot it well at all, and we're still in the neighborhood. Scooney Penn, 5 points. Eight rebounds already for Ohio State. Well, you've got to convert the chances you get against a team like Detroit. They're not very big, but they're aggressive, and they don't give you a lot of good shots. Ohio State has dominated the boards, but they haven't gotten any points from the, that advantage inside on the rebounding. Winner of this game, battling to see who meets Auburn on Thursday in Knoxville. Detroit, a 12 seed, Ohio State, a 4 seed, and we already know from today's earlier action. The higher seed you are, the more vulnerable you can be. A lot of good teams out there in some of those double-digit seed spots. We'll keep an eye on that game. Let's return to the Key Arena in Seattle. Kevin Harlan and John Sunfold will pick up the action with Weber State in Florida. Gentlemen. Catch him with the turnaround hook. Rebound. Baskerville slips through the cracks. Got another shot away. Couldn't get it in. Ted Dupay brings it down. He just hit a three. Floored off by six. Weeks with a three. Right into the hands of Gill. Gill, way outside. And that is his game. Push the basketball, get him on their heels. If they challenge him, explosive point guard can go by about anybody. But as Dupay and they back up, he will knock it in. Halfway through, it was looking very close. Now, close again. 26 to 23. Dupay with another three. Cannot go under the screen if Teddy Dupay runs a pick and roll. He'll simply stand behind there and knock most of those in. He won't miss many. Parker to Haslam. Expect Haslam when he kicks this ball to relocate back down inside. Knocked away by Baskerville. Here comes Arsenal. Buckle up! Oh, he takes your breath away! He takes your breath away! to within one. Ohio State leading Detroit 14 to 6. Surprise they call him the show, Kevin? No. A spectacular tournament he has had. Big Sky Player of the Year, his first year in the league. Reach has one. Bulldozing his way inside. And clearing room. Harold Arsenal, 36 on Thursday. Off to an unbelievable start. He has 13 already. He's done on the defensive end. Now watch the hesitation, the gather, the pound. Well, he has been something spectacular. With a Jordan-esque move, and the kind of move he pulled off so successfully against Jordan's old school, North Carolina, in the huge upset Thursday night. And again, it's the quiet nature that he's done it. No taunting, no talking. Asked if he would 
was excited to beat North Carolina. He said, well, just another game. Player of the year this year in the Big Sky. Player of the year when he was at College of Eastern Utah in the Scenic Western Conference. Then he went to Midland Junior College and was player of the year there. Lawson doubled near midcourt as they get it off to Jackson. Into Arsenal, levitates and is whacked by Haslam. The key is the quickness again. Off his feet to the basket, the release of the ball. Sometimes a shot blocker, you have time when a player gets up, released. This is too quick. Can't allow him catches near the rim. Good bounce pass. Told you Arsenal in his first year, high school basketball, played in the shadows of the Superdome in New Orleans, where he was an MVP for three seasons. He was nicknamed Turtle because at that time he was slow, but then he grew and he got quicker. They had a tough time growing up in the housing projects of New Orleans. Great problems forced him to go to the community college and the junior college route, which he did for two years. Then everybody wanted him. St. John's, UNLV, Alabama, Florida State. But he was familiar with the program at Weber State because a one-time assistant there became an assistant at Weber State. That's where he went there. And as John just said, the Big Sky Player of the Year, setting records, and as we just saw, bringing you out of your seat. Guy beats the assistant coach now at Weber State, who was the head coach at College of Eastern Utah. At Arsenal, Gill and Noel Jackson all as players. I bet they won. <laughs> no doubt about it. The game for complete coverage of the NCAA tournament with live scores, stats, and more. Check out Tournament Live only on cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online and our keyword CBS Sportsline. I know yesterday John and I were on that most of the day as we're keeping up to date on the busy first round of the tournament. And it was great. A lot of stuff, a lot of excitement. To pay the screen, the drive, and the dish. Here comes Miller. Into Stoltz with a great feed from the freshman Mike Miller. Now Mike Miller can do it all. The best part of his game, obviously, is the jump shot, but really off the dribble, he can create so many things. Gill, like a fish underwater, shimmies inside and is forced out of bounds with the ball. So Florida will end up. And there is Damian Baskerville, a guy who came off the bench and gave him tremendous energy. And now, as you can see, having some back problems, trying to get loosened up. Now one of their valuable players, as I mentioned before, the last two years, all conference in the big sky. This year, he's taking a backseat to a guy like Arsenal who brings another three. A lethal shooter. 18 points for Arsenal. He's done it again. Back-to-back -back great games, knocks it away with leaping defense. It's Gill. Might as well find it. Arsenal. He'll fly and try to create. And Jensen gets it. And he bumped into Miller and wisely ricochets off the unsuspecting Miller to save it for Weaver State. How can one side contain so many great games? We are tied at 30. In the first half in Indianapolis, Ohio State leading Detroit 21-6. We'll keep you advised as to what happens in that game, but we're going to move you to the key arena in Seattle. Second round action in the West where Weber State and Florida are now tied at 30 apiece with under four minutes to play, Clark. Two very good offensive team, Greg. Let's join Kevin Harlan and John Sunvold in Seattle. 14th seed Weber State from Ogden, Utah. Over the six-seed Florida Gators early in the game. We're tied now at 30 apiece, under four minutes to play. And again, it's been Harold Arsenal who has scored the last seven for the Wildcats. And the key now for Weber State is make sure Arsenal gets touches. There's Florida now trying to double team and do some things with him. There'll be some open jump shots. Guys like Lawson and Eddie Gill should find themselves open. Gill fires and knocks it down. Quick release. Weber stayed on top 32 to 30. Right to Stoltz. Huge spin and a sweeping hook for two. They have scored easily in soccer. Two-three zone now by the Florida Gators. Lawson be 
becomes a threat outside, as does Gill. Arsenal will move inside and outside. If he can catch the ball in the middle of the floor, he's a bigger threat. You like the zone? I do like the zone. Got to find a way when Arsenal goes to areas they can match up. A good ball move here. There's a good shooting team, too. Arsenal lost it. Shot clock at four. He'll reload and travel. Good call and good thing for Florida. He just buried another three after the whistle. The switch up to the zone D. Now, Weaver State is very good with the pass. Now, Arsenal passes up a shot there because Stolt recovered. They knew who the shooters are. There's the step. One, two, good call. And by the way, he didn't make the shot. <laughs> another three. Arsenal is now out. 32 apiece with another three to play in the first half here. Miller to right. He finds a wide open Weeks. Indian Weeks with a good stroke. They shot the ball well from beyond the three point line about the last seven ball games. 56% from behind the three point line. You know, John Florida has already hit six threes in this game. Not surprising. Where they've lived that all year long. And so they let the half break up on Clark Kellogg. Get you updated on all the tournament news, all the scores, all the highlights, plus a live look, all the action going on right now in the NCAA tournament. All coming up on Penn Soil at the half with John Sundle to Mike Harris, Kevin Hart in Seattle, which has been just filled with great play. With Arsenal out, Eddie Gill has to have the ball in his hands more. Ohio State, the Buckeyes all over Detroit. Late first half from Indy. Johnson launching a three. Down it goes. You have to match up and find shooters and know the scouting report. When Mark Lawson steps in, he's looking for the three ball. Deadlocked at 35. Weaver State is at four threes, and they get a turnover there. Lawson in the middle, and down the stretch they come. Gill outside, way off the mark. Jensen hooks it up. That won't fly. Weaver State will end up with 1.42 to play in the half. Arsenal's going to get back into this ball game. They gave them about a minute rest. Well, they will allow him in. He will sit and wait again. He's still catching his breath. Eddie Gill makes his team run, even when Arsenal's in. The ability to find open play. Lawson, good ball move. Into Moore, just off the bench, but he threw it away. A better reaction defensively, though. Travel. A Gator turnover. They've got 12 in the first half. You know, anytime you play at this pace, but Kenya Weeks simply got caught picking up the dribble, trying to make a play when nothing was there. Arsenal is back in. Coach Ron Abigail. 11 turnovers in the last 13 minutes for the Gators. And Weber State players have to feel confident because they got Florida out of the pressing situation. Jackson with the double lock and a great fake inside. The scoop with the left. Eddie Shannon is in. Dupay trolling the perimeter with the screen from Stoltz. Rebound kill as he had to climb over Miller. And I think he will hurt you if you go under that screen. Jackson. Picked up by Miller. Now they've got numbers. Miller with the dance and the trap. You will not see that call very often when the guy in the middle of his dribble is called for traveling. The smile by Mike Skinny Miller, freshman out of Mitchell, South Dakota. He held that ball in his hand, shuffled the feet. A rare call that we don't see. 22nd timeout taken by Weaver State. They survived the second half comeback by North Carolina Thursday. Florida coming in 22 and 8, the sixth seed, playing Billy Ball, the exhaustive style of their coach, Billy Donovan, battled back from a double digit deficit to eliminate the Penn Quakers on Thursday. Saw the brackets, Gonzaga, the win over Stanford, and Gonzaga had enough bodies to handle it inside and did a solid job. This Gonzaga backcourt, though, is terrific. 
This entire half is swung within eight points. Weber State up by two. Florida's been up by six. Right now, the Wildcats lead it 37 to 35 with under a minute to play in the first half. Woods to Gill. Elio Carcino up and count again. Florida cannot inoculate themselves over the show. The decision to pass the catch. Fourteenth seed Weber State leading six seed Florida. Fourteen against six. It's now 39 to 35 with Weber State leading with that free throw by Arsenal by five. Arsenal has dazzled us again. 34 against North Carolina on Thursday. He has dropped 21 on Florida this afternoon. Parker's in. Shot clock is away. What do you call him? Well, Dupay will go off the screen. Watch Stoltz stepping away after to see if he gets his shot. And Dupay had it. They had the play set up. Greg Stoltz set the screen. Dupay turned the corner. He turns around and fires it back to Greg Stoltz. He stands there for an open three. It was off Arsenal. Florida will inbound with 5.4 to play in the half. He is becoming a major story in this tournament. Harold Arsenal of Weber State. To pay to Miller, launching a three, short. It's caught by Jackson, good if it goes. And we're at halftime. Weber State unblemished when leading at halftime. As they did North Carolina. And Florida is getting caught in the Arsenal but saw again tonight. 21 points with a spectacular first half as we send it over to Mike Harris. All right, thanks very much, Kevin. Coach, you're halfway home. Go back to you. We got another great one brewing here in Seattle. That's the end of the first half. Weber State by five. Greg Gumlin, Clark Kellogg on deck. Pennzoil at the half right after this message. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop-and-go driving. Stop. Go. Pennzoil. Welcome, everyone. Pennzoil at the Half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. And uh, let's first talk about Weber State and Florida. This is a five-point game, and the Wildcats, who are 19-0 and when leading at halftime, are sitting in a pretty good position. Both of these teams are excellent offensive teams. They shoot a high percentage. They've done that in the first half. The difference has been the turnovers. Florida has 14 turnovers, and that's been the difference in the first half. The, diff the winner in this game meets Gonzaga in Phoenix on Thursday. Now at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis at the break, Detroit. Detroit trailing Ohio State 25 to 12. Boy, Detroit head coach Perry Watson came in on such a high from two nights ago, but he ran into Scooney Penn. And this is what the Buckeyes like to do. Push it ahead. Scooney loves to knock down that three in transition. He drills that one. And more Scooney Penn here. These two teams fighting for the right to meet Auburn in Knoxville on Thursday. And right now the Buckeyes are in charge. Fourth seed in the South. 25 to 12 is the lead for Ohio State. At Key Arena in Seattle today Gonzaga upset the Stanford Cardinal second seed Cardinal 82 to 74 some of the big moments of this action as it transpired today yeah, again are getting to the shooter Santangelo reels and deals and fires and hits about is the patience at oh they didn't cover from 